Okay, so uh, once I start, you know, the 20 minutes of time is really short amount of time, even for me. So, um, so I will um, be careful in my use of time. And, um, and I think uh, there aren't that many questions in electrostatics where use of computer algebra system will actually save me time. So I'll just uh, uh, do everything, all the required math by hand. I won't use computer algebra system. So with that, I'm going to start the assessment. Just make sure it's not the one I did before, and then just try to finish it in 20 minutes with some explanation. Okay, yeah, that's not the one I did before, so let me do that. Okay, it says consider three different situations given below for full credit, give full correct answer to at least two situations if time allows. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, uh, let me try to do all three, um, see if I uh, have enough time to do all three. So for it to calculate the electric field, okay, give both magnitude and direction. Okay, just the electric field. All right, that's good. So consider dipole arrangement shown below. Uh, yeah, that's just a word description of the arrangement and it's asking for magnitude of it. Okay, so let me start with a, a picture of the setup so that I can point out some things that you should consider. Um, so plus Q, and we are looking for electric field along the dotted line. Oh, wow. Okay, so I needed to calculate the electric field as a function of Y. Uh, along here. Um, what's uh, useful for me to note is that x is zero along this line. That helps me simplify some things. So I'll pick a representative point. Let's say a point here. Um, and visualize the electric field due to each of these charges. So from charge plus Q, there should be electric field pointed that way. From charge minus Q along this line, there's an electric field towards minus Q. So once you draw these figures, I hope you realize that the Y component of electric field will cancel out. So the only component of electric field you have to worry about is the X component that adds up to something like this. Realizing this helps simplify your calculation because you only have to worry about the X component of each of these contributions and not worry about the Y component, knowing that they will cancel out. And in fact, the direction of electric field is in the uh, plus x direction. So magnitude of E. Now I have to use Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law tells me the uh, formula for the electric field due to a point charge, which is going to be Coulomb constant times the amount of charge divided by distance, uh, let me not use D because that's already there, divided by distance squared. So for the contribution from the positive charge, I know that its magnitude will be Ke plus Q divided by R. Now I have to work out the, direct, uh, the distance. So this is D over 2. This, okay, this is where uh, this re being representative point with a coordinate Y tells me this uh, leg here. That should be Y. That allows me to calculate this hypotenuse, which is going to be square root of the squares. Uh, or some of the squares of the legs. Um, there. So I'm going to take the hypotenuse, square it, so the square root will go away. So for magnitude, it'll be d over 2 squared plus y squared. And, um, and I'll handle the x component in a bit. Let me work out an expression, or actually, I was thinking of working out an expression for the the magnitude of the, the the electric field contribution from minus Q, but I think from symmetry, I can see that this will also be the same magnitude for that contribution. And in fact, uh, if I just work out the, the X component here, then I can just double it. That'll give me E net. So I can just let this be double of that. So let me, oops, uh, I'm doing wrong kind of undo. So let me just work out the x component of uh, that. So um, for the x component, I'm basically considering uh, this triangle here. Uh, that's the the you know the the, um, the magnitude, and I have these two legs. And for the x component, 
I'm looking at this leg here. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I need a this angle here, uh, which I'm not given. But I think uh, I had, have enough sense of geometry to know that this angle is same as this angle here. So this triangle will help me figure out how to get the x component. So, you know, in terms of just the mathematical expression, the x component will be the magnitude times adjacent side, so it should be cosine theta. And um, so theta is, um, so I could say, oh, I know the two sides, uh, y and um, d over 2. So I can say theta is arc tangent of y over d over 2. So uh, so if you said the x component is e plus times cosine of arc tan of uh, y over d over 2, and if you uh, gave an answer based on that, I wouldn't say that's wrong, but um, there's a, a calculational technique that will actually allow you to get a uh, algebraic expression for this, analytical expression for this, that doesn't rely on inverse trig functions. And it's uh, the a technique called the drawing the triangle, um, which I've already drawn. So let me, um, let me finish it completing the triangle with the label for the hypotenuse, which I've worked, uh, worked out before. Square root of d over 2 squared plus y squared. And the amazing thing you have here is that once you have all the size of the triangle, you have the tool for looking up any trig function you need. So, you know, cosine of theta, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. You, so you just write out adjacent over the hypotenuse. And that's the expression for cosine of theta. No inverse trig function needed. So I can say, my um, x component of the electric field is um, equal to that, KEQ over D over 2 squared plus Y squared times this expression. And it simplifies a little bit. Um, square root of, well, maybe not that much. Uh, it simplifies this much. I can combine the denominator um, into this expression. So KEQ times still D over 2 divided by um, D over 2 squared plus Y squared raised to the power of 3 halves. Simple. It's a little bit simpler. So that times 2 will give you E net. So let me write that out. That should be uh, 2 times KEQ times D over 2 divide by um, d over 2 um, squared plus y squared. I think I'm going to run out of time, 3 over 2. So I'm definitely not going to have enough time to do all three. Uh, or maybe, you know what, let me see. Um, maybe if I don't waste too much time explaining, I can do all three. I do think I have enough time to do b, definitely. So this is a, an integration exercise. Um, I, you've had a homework question like this, so hopefully doing it again won't be too time consuming. So you have a um, uh, rod like this, and we are looking for electric field at a point P, that's a distance B away. And when you are trying to find uh, electric field by integration, the starting point is to express um, contribution to electric field due to some small representative element that's going to have charge dq. And you want to have parameters for expressing this representative element. Let's say I'm going to say my y is equal to 0 here. So this is at some position and my positive y goes downward, and this is some um, at some location y. That's the, um, that's the expression I'm going to use. And the thickness of this can be expressed with the dy, or length of that can be expressed with dy. OK, so the contribution to electric field at this point, you use Coulomb's law, which says the uh, electric field contribution, that's the d for infinitesimal, is Coulomb's constant times the amount of charge, the infinitesimal amount of charge, divided by distance squared. Let me rewrite this distance squared in terms of the parameters that are here. 
So I'm looking for this distance here. So that will be b plus y. So b plus y squared. And y is going to be positive. Good. Okay, so once I have that expression, and let me copy that down so that I can kind of put some spaces in it for um, things I'm going to be doing. So what you want to do is uh, you want to um, think of a scheme to add it up. Add it up from uh, basically where uh, y is equal to 0 to where y is equal to L. So w when, once you add up the contributions, along the entire rod, that's going to give you the total electric field. And in order to do that, you have to express your expression for the infinitesimal charge, dq, in terms of um, your coordinate variables, in terms of your y and dy, or y and dy. And as you think of that, I hope this is an expression you can arrive at on your own somehow. Uh, something like, um, so let's see, dq over q0, so proportion of the uh, total charge that dq is, that's going to be proportion of the total length L that dy is. Once you have that expression, then you can rewrite it into infinitesimal amount of charge is equal to move Q0 over, Q0 over L times dy. You can also think of this as uh, this being the, what we call linear charge density, lambda. So you know, linear charge density times the length would give you the infinitesimal amount of charge. So once you have that, so let me replace um, that portion of the expression with that. dq is going to become Q0 over L times dy. Then now you have some idea to integrate this with respect to y from 0 to L. And that's going to be over the whole rod. So let's uh, uh, try doing this integral. Let me just scroll to right and do that integral. Um, I'm going to factor out all the things that are constant, things that don't depend on y. That's going to be Ke Q0 over L. And everything else depends on y. Um, y is equal to 0 to L. Am I going to need uh, b plus y squared? This is one of those um, integrals that needs trick substitution. Uh, seven minutes. Um, can I do trick substitution? It's been a while. Um, let me try doing it by hand. <laughs> so I recognize I need a trick substitution because... Um, um, uh, I don't have a linear factor of y above, so u substitution won't work. So uh, the trick substitution, so I need to say uh, y is equal to, um, I don't know, p. It's been too long since I've done trick substitution. I don't think I can do this. Uh, so. This is allowed, so I am not cheating. You can use Wolfram Alpha. Um, Wolfram Alpha will do simple integrals like this. So integrate. <laughs> I, I'm too far out of practice to be able to do this under time limit um, in my head. Actually, can I do? You know, oh, sorry, I panicked too early. I think I can do U substitution. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, not trick substitution. Because you can do this substitution. You can do. Um, u is equal to b plus y, and then go from there. I thought the squared was just on y, but it's not that. Uh, squared is on the whole thing. So I can, yeah, yeah, I, I can <laughs> panic totally. So we do this u substitution, du is equal to dy. So you don't actually even have to change the numerator. You can just say, um, so let me actually uh, change the line here. So you can say k q naught over l and with the u substitution the thing you have to remember to do is remember to change your limits so as i change my variable to u i have to plug in what y is and change the limits from b to um, l plus b and dy will just become du du over u squared now this is a simple algebraic um, 
this is simple power formula. So uh, I know the antiderivative of that. So k eq naught over l u from b to l plus b. This is you know um, this, so the form of this looks like u to the minus two. So the antiderivative of that is u to the minus one or minus u to the minus one. The wait, sorry. I'm, <laughs> doing notation wrong. So the antiderivative anti of my integrand up there, that's uh, minus u to the minus 1. And double check it for yourself by taking derivative of this in your head. You know, this comes down, subtract 1, you get that. So, so with the antiderivative having been found, evaluated at the limit, b to l plus b. And I can plug those in and get the expression. Um, so plug in the upper limit first, minus 1 over L plus B, and then minus, minus, or plus, lower limit, 1 over B. And that looks about right to me. Um, and I'm expecting, um, guess the way I define the direction of Y, I'm expecting a negative number. And um, I got a positive answer. That's a little concerning. But it's probably fine. Uh, I, I know the direction of uh, E, so I'll just say direction of it is upward, uh, directly away from rot. And magnitude of E, uh, I think that's actually correct. So I did verify this is going to be positive. So let me just plug in that positive expression. KQ naught over L times 1 minus 1 over L plus B plus 1 over b. So I think it came out to be positive because the way I set up my integral up here um, with the, this expression, this is positive integrand. So when you integrate from, uh, you know, regular integral with the, uh, the upper limit being larger, this would be a positive number. So, um, so I, I think I was wrong in thinking it would have come out to be negative. So it's all right, got that. Do I have enough time for the last one? Three minutes. Probably if I try not explaining anything. So let me just try that. Uh, I'll just uh, um, just work on it silently. How much time do I have left? Okay. So the direction that's uh, uh, directly right word. Um,
Well, um, doesn't sound right. Um, let me. There's a numerical factor I might be missing, um, but let me put in something within the time limit. Uh, r squared. This will amount to, to some numerical factor that's either two or one. Did I miss something? Um, I, that's, uh, oh, that's actually minus one, so um, I was plugging the limit rule. That was, um, so minus uh, cosine of it's minus one, and then minus that, um, so plus, and then cosine of zero is plus one, so yeah, they add up to be two, yeah. So I think I uh, put in the correct answer there, um, unless I missed the factor somehow. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, <laughs> so if I did this right, so you know the second part will um, they won't grade correctly, um, but the, these should be using some auto grading system. So if I did them correctly, um, they I should have gotten fifty percent of points. <laughs> if I didn't, uh, I will go into the solution and see um, just so that um, we can uh, uh, for the purpose of. 43%. Oh, you know, I think that's actually right. Um, so um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven answer boxes. And um, of those, I can expect to, to have gotten credit for three of them. So so three divided by seven, that's a 43%. So yeah, I, all, I got all the three boxes correctly that I could have gotten credit for. So um, since I did this last one silently, <laughs> the, the brief explanation of what I was doing. Um, so in order to calculate the total electric field, uh, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking a representative element so that I can write an expression for the electric field contribution from that representative element and then integrate through. And I started working with the only X component. By X, I mean, you know, in the this system. Um, I, because I realized that in integrating over this whole thing, it'll, any Y component will integrate uh, average out to zero. Uh, or you can do the pairwise cancellation thing to, to see. So that's why I started with X component alone. And then I worked out the geometry to make sure that the way I decided to define theta, that I uh, associated correctly, whether it's a sine or a cosine of theta with the x. Here it worked out to be sine theta because the x component is the opposite side of the angle. So once I have that, then you know I set up the integral. I factor out all the things that are constant. It turned out to be a relatively simple integral involving just one trig function. So I did the antiderivative and I confused myself briefly in plugging in the limits, but before time ran out, I <laughs> realized it, it'll be two and justified it later before time ran out. So uh, let me, uh, uh, so to attach work after the fact, the way you should do it is, you know, in this view, you won't be able to attach work. So the easiest way to get to the screen where you can attach work is to refresh it. Uh, when you refresh it, you will get this button for adding work. So go to that and then add work. So let me just uh, add all the work so that I um, finish this up properly. Um, yeah, from here, I think I can do it in, oops. Ooh. That is really in the way, can I? Okay, good. Um, so there's work for A. Work for B. It's going to copy in an overlapping way. And work for C. And again, for you, I recommend that you take some time to organize your work. There isn't any kind of time limit for attaching work. It does timestamp it, but you know, I don't pay too much attention to it, as long as you're not changing your work after I've graded. Um, so let me save work, and I can review that in, the, in this. Um, so in this view, I can see the work, but not change that, um, other than rotating it, uh, rotating the image.